friends, long time no see. <laughs> this is Rainy and it has been a couple of months, I think, since I have given you a, a booktube update. Um, no real reason for that other than uh, it's just been very busy <laughs> the last couple of months and I feel like I've been a little bit slumpy in the reading area of my life. Um, I have been reading, but it has not been um, nearly as much as normal, which is fine. I mean, if I wasn't on booktube, I probably wouldn't read um, nearly as much as I do <laughs> being on booktube. Um, just, sorry, I'm reaching for my coffee. Um, but, and which I think is totally fine. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, on being on booktube, you think like 10 books a month is like normal for most people, <laughs> but I don't think that that is true. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe, but, um, yeah, I don't, I just, I don't think that that is like a normal amount. At least it's not in my, um, you know, sphere of friends outside of the booktube world, like, 10 books a month for people is like, what? You read 10 books in one month? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I've probably, let's see, how many books have I finished this month? I've read one, two, three. Well, okay, so here you go. In April, I have only, up till today, finished three books. I am almost done with a fourth one. So, I mean, that's like a book a week, but there were days that I didn't read anything at all. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. So this will probably be a really quick wrap up for you. <laughs> uh, hopefully if I don't ramble too much. So let's just get into what I have read in the month of April. The first book that I read in the month of April was Thistles and the Unthinkable by London Lovett. And you are probably used to seeing me with a London Lovett book in my hand at this point. Um, she is my favorite cozy mystery author and I have just been uh, enjoying cozy mysteries lately. I, I just need like potato chippy type of fast reads if I'm going to read physically. Uh, I don't want to sit for hours and hours on end. Reading small print, I like fast uh, plot heavy books. <laughs> and, and that is what um, London Lovett provides for me. Uh, this is the 16th book in the Port Danby series, which uh, her 18th book just came out. So I am only like two books behind at this point. And I was hoping to get the 17th book one so that I would be caught up when the 18th book came out, but that didn't happen. So this one, I can't say too much about these books at this point because there would be huge spoilers if I were to tell you a lot. But um, this book, this was in the, in the Unthinkable, it uh, is in the, I think it's, I think it was centered in the summer months. Uh, I think just like in June, uh, and it centers on a wedding and uh, all the stress that comes along with a wedding. <laughs> and um, and of course somebody dies. And, but it was kind of funny because the, uh, the murder actually was, oh, sorry, I keep hitting my table. The murder was actually kind of not as prominent in this one as was all the wedding drama that ensued <laughs> throughout this book. So this one, I would say probably because of the drama that happened was probably not my favorite of the series. Um, you know, I still enjoyed all the characters and everything. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed seeing uh, the, the, the combination, the culmination of <laughs> Of everything that was happening in this because there are characters that I have a really um fond uh, a fondness for uh but all the drama that ensued around it was really like stressing me out and at times really irritating me <laughs> so this was not one of my favorites but I do really enjoy this you know the covers of course and um 
and I love this like teal color and ah, so pretty. Um, so that, that is to say, oh, I left my, the next one over there. The next book in the series, um, is a winter book, which I will hopefully be reading in May. So that's, I don't mind doing that though. <laughs> um, and then, uh, then I can get on to her newest book, but we'll, we'll talk about that in plans. Um, the next book I listened to on audio and, uh, I read this with my friend, Amy Bowman from, uh oh, I forget what her new channel name is. I'll, I'll link it below. Of course, <laughs> it used to just be Amy Bowman and she's changed it. I can't remember what it is. I'm blanking on the channel names today. I just filmed a floss tube right before this and totally couldn't come up with some of the people that I was talking about. <laughs> I didn't plan well. But anyway, we buddy read Confessions of a Prairie Beep. <laughs> and you will see it in the title here. Um, and uh, we had been on Krista's Patreon um, book club and we're talking about uh, just things from our childhood. And we were talking about um, a Little House on the Prairie and how a lot of us really enjoyed that series growing up. And Amy mentioned this book and I was like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to read this book for so long. <laughs> so we decided we were going to buddy read it. And it was so delightful to read it with Amy. Um, it was the... Um, uh, What's her name? Allison Argum, I think is how you say her last name, who played Nellie Olson in the TV version of Little House on the Prairie. She narrates the book and I had it on audio. I think Amy was both listening to it and reading the physical copy. Um, and there were some, she told me that there were some really awesome pictures in the physical copy. So I found an ebook copy and it was really fun to, um, to look at those and see like the behind the scenes of Little House on the Prairie. That was like my show growing up. I loved that show so much. Um, so this was just really a delightful look back at that um, through the eyes of one of the characters. I was a little bit concerned that uh, it would kind of ruin it for me. <laughs> when she started telling me, telling us about the like real people behind the show, um, but it didn't. She, Nellie Olson, uh, Allison Argum, she really has a fondness for that time in her life and she is not one of those people that is upset that she's been stereotyped as Nellie Olson. Um, she really feels like it being on that show saved her in a lot of ways. There, There's some really heavy stuff that, um, that Allison went through in her life. Um, and yeah, so there was a lot of that and a lot of, um, but a lot of lighthearted things too, and a lot of interactions. Um, it's funny because one of my care, my favorite characters or my favorite character on the show was Mary Ingalls, the oldest sister. And, um, and the and the girl who played it like she does they don't they don't like they don't paint her in the greatest light let's <laughs> let's just say they're not like mean about her but they basically were like yeah we weren't friends <laughs> and so that kind of ruined Mary for me a little bit but not not a lot like I I realize I I acted for many years of my life I realized that you know, the characters that you see on TV are not the way that the character, the people act in real life, you know, but I just didn't want to like hear that one of them was like, you know, a horrible, uh, you know, diva or something like that. And it was never anything like that. Like she definitely didn't make anybody out to be divas on the show or anything like that. So it was really nice to just hear like a refreshingly nice view of something that you grew up loving and and to have somebody like one of the characters not be like oh I wish I'd never done this show it was so awful you know <laughs> it was not like that at all she's very happy um to be uh, thought of as the prairie bee <laughs> so <laughs> it was great and I loved reading it with Amy um Amy just 
she's very good at buddy reading and like taking notes. I am not good at taking notes. And, <laughs> she, and she would just, she would uh, message me and just be laughing about something. And <laughs> it was great. So I really enjoyed that experience with her. So then the final book that I read in April that so far um, <laughs> has been um, To Be Where You Are, and it is the final book in the Mitford Years series by Jan Karen. Um, and if you have been following me and uh, Kate Howe and Angie from Literary Labors and Chelsea from Voyage of a Time Wanderer, you will know that we have been um, co-hosting a read-along of this series for over a year now. Uh, there were 14 books in the series, and when we got done with um, the the year that we did, and we did take we did end up taking a couple of months off um, for just other things that we all had going on. So when we got to the end of what we were planning on for the year, uh, we were like, we got to finish this series. We love it so much. We got to finish it. <laughs> so um, so yeah, that was really uh, nice to finish up the series. It was just a lovely little, um, you know, last book for like kind of just tied everything up and, um, and yeah, it's another one that I can't really say a whole heck of a lot about, um, because, you know, it would ruin things, but, um, it centers around Father Tim Cavanaugh, who is an Episcopalian minister. You would think that I would know this after 14 books, but I feel like he was Episcopalian. <laughs> Um, and it's definitely a Christian series. Um, Jesus definitely focuses or, you know, is on the forefront of a lot of their discussions and a lot of their situations, but, uh, we all agreed that we don't feel like it was ever cheesy or forced. It was definitely just woven, um, pretty, pretty effortlessly into the lives of these people. Like you never felt like they were just gonna preach you a sermon in the middle of some, you know, random event. Um, it all very much tied in. Uh, I, I feel like even people that aren't Christians could read this and not be like annoyed by it. I don't, I don't know because I am a Christian, so I don't know. But, um, but if you, if you aren't a Christian and you've read this series, did you like it? Did you feel like it was too, um, preachy or whatever? But, I mean, obviously it's a Christian series, so you should know what you're getting into when you get in, when you read this, but, um, but yeah, it was just so lovely. All the characters are lovely. It's very character driven, but there are, um, there are a lot of, um, sort of heavier plot lines that run throughout the series, um, that, uh, that just make it very, a very interesting read and you're really rooting for a lot of people and, um, there's definitely a lot of redemption arcs in, in the store or throughout the series. So it's just been a joy to read it. And we were very sad that it's over. <laughs> and I almost want to just restart the series all over again already because I loved it that much, but, um, probably won't do that, <laughs> but, um, at least not for a while. We are going to be starting a new series for a read along the Miss Julia series in, um, in May. We haven't picked a date yet, but, uh, we decided we wanted to continue on with a similar style series. So, um, none of us have ever read this, uh, Miss Julia series though. So it might not be in any way, shape or form like Mitford. Who knows? But um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. Okay, so those are the only three books that I have fully finished in the month of April. However, I am currently uh, a little over halfway done in Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Sorry for the uh, library copy glare. Um, <laughs> I am actually uh, listening to this on audiobook. Um, and I was trying to like follow along in the book for a while, but I kind of got out of that because I was just being very sporadic reading this, um, or listening to this. So I didn't really keep up with page numbers and all that stuff. So I am buddy reading this with my friend Tiffany from Beautiful Wainusha and her friend Amy. We are, um, we had a couple of other people in the, in the group with us too, but they kind of dropped out on us. <laughs> so, but, and actually I think... At this point, I'm the only one still reading it. Um, 
I just, yeah, like I said, I kind of got slumpy in the middle of the month. And, um, and I will say that I, I am realizing that it is kind of hard for me to follow Dickens on audio. Uh, I probably should just physically read <laughs> Dickens from now on. Um, because at the very beginning of this, I was having a really hard time following the characters and the different storylines that Dickens always has going. Um, now that we're farther in, I'm, I'm having an easier time and I'm enjoying it more, but because I let myself get so far behind because I got bogged down with so many characters, um, you know, that's why I am so far behind. So I'm thinking for my next Dickens, I might just have to buckle down and just read it physically or, or read along with an audiobook. but, um, it's not going to be one that I can just sit and uh, cross stitch <laughs> while I am listening to it. I'm going to have to, or I probably can do that, but I definitely can't be at work and listen to this. That was what I was doing. And some books I can do that, um, listen to an audiobook while I'm at work, but Dickens is not one of those authors that I can do that. So um, if I do listen to it on audiobook, it's going to have to be at night while I am crafting. <laughs> so while I still have you here, let's just go over um, my May plans. I actually am not going to do a specific TBR <laughs> for May because May is going to be another exceptionally busy month for me. Uh, and being that I still feel kind of slumpy, I, I just don't really want to get into a giant TBR. Um, so I did tell you that uh, Kate and Angie and Chelsea and I are starting a new read along um, where we will be reading Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind. And this is by Anne B. Ross. Um, so and this looks pretty, pretty small. So, uh, and I, I'm a, I have a feeling that we're going to be meeting at the end of the month. We haven't um, picked a date yet, but uh, we'll probably start doing live shows for this at the end of every month, like we did for Mitford. And I don't, I honestly don't know what this series is about. I didn't read the back of the book. I, <laughs> I don't remember what Kate said about it. Kate was the one that suggested it. So I have no idea. I'm going in blind. <laughs> And then the other book that I want to read early in the month is Holly in Horror by London Lovett, the 17th book in her Port Danby series, because I need to get to the uh, most recent one. And then, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, this is exciting. So, um, you know that I read, I, I, I'm in the ARC group for, uh, for London now with her new series that she has, The Frostfall. Uh, Island series. So, um, you know, I have a little bit more communication with her now. And I have a in real life friend, Kim, who is reading the Port Danby series also. And um, we were talking and Kim uh, has, she really loves daisies. And she's like, you know, Port Danby series has get to do a daisy, um, a daisy theme <laughs> yet. And so um, we were just like fooling around one day talking about like, what would we call a Daisy themed Port Danby book? So uh, we came up with Daisies and Destruction and which, you know, that's, we don't feel like we're like, yay, we came up with a super, um, you know, uh, creative title. Like, <laughs> but, um, but I was talking then to London on Instagram and I told her about it and she's like, Oh, well, I actually need a, um, need one, a, a title for the next book. And she's like, do you care if I use that? And I'll, I'll credit you and Kim with, uh, coming up with the name. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so she actually did a cover reveal, um, for the, for that book. And it was like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. She credited me and um, and my friend Kim with coming up with the title and, you know, the kind of the theme for the next book. And yeah, we're really excited. We we feel famous. <laughs> so yeah, um, we're, we're hoping that that one comes out soon. Um, and I believe the next Frostfall Island arcs will be coming out soon as well. So I will probably try to read those in May or that one in May as well. Um, so, but like I said, I'm not like 
pushing myself to read too much in um, in May. Uh, I do need to get back on the Les Mis bandwagon with my friend Felicia. We both kind of got busy uh, and didn't read as much of it in April as we should have. So, but we're just kind of taking it easy with that. But I would kind of like to get back on track and um, at least do uh, one section uh, per month. So, uh, that's kind of on my radar, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, this has probably been a longer video than I intended it to be for as little as I've read this month. So I will sign off here and uh, we'll see you sometime in May uh, for hopefully another, um, maybe a weekly reads or maybe it will only be a wrap up again. I can't say. So, <laughs> all right, friends, I will talk to you soon. Bye.